Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Eric Woodruff. I am so excited to be here with you to give an overview of the new Certified Energy Manager Training Program. Um, this is going to be a very quick but content-heavy webinar. We're going to give you some slide views of the new workbook that we've just developed. And again, I'm just thrilled to be here, and I want to make this absolutely worth your while. We've got a lot of people on the horn, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about me, just the background. I won't spend much time here because every minute we spend here is one minute less that we have content. Uh, and I think this content is very important for you. So just quickly, I've been in this field a long time. I've been a CEM for more than a couple decades. I've written some books. And let's just say I'm a little bit passionate about this topic. It's been basically my whole career. And, um, you know, it's just uh, fun for me. So anyway, um, on to the agenda. <clears throat> you know, we're going to hit a little bit about why you should even bother watching this webinar, and this will apply to existing CEMs as well as new people who have not taken their CEM you know, yet. And then I'm going to give you an overall view of the structure of the new training workbook and tools. So we're going to you know, basically do this via a sample of slides, and I'm going to talk about some things that we've added. One of the things, just hit it right off the top, is we've got learning objectives and review quiz and solutions in every single section. So basically, you know, right off the bat, at, every, at the beginning of every section, you're going to know, why am I here? What, what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to master? And then we'll have review and quiz. So that's pretty exciting. We've streamlined a lot of content in this uh, update and really a complete rewrite. But still, we've maintained some, you know, things that we find that are very valuable to the CEM program. We have energy basically as it flows from the utility through your facility, through different systems. We usually focus on terminology in each section. Then we do strategies and tactics to reduce energy. So we'll be covering all of that in kind of a sample of slides. And I think overall you're going to see that we have better graphics, videos, and references than we've ever had. And at the very end we'll have a little time for Q&A. And so let's just jump right into this. Um, why should you even watch this webinar? Well, <clears throat> I, I really feel strongly that energy management can change the world. I think it's extremely important to our environment. It's extremely important to our economy. And this new training program offers extremely valuable information for you or your team. You know, if you're a facility manager and you've got a team of maintenance managers or plant managers, whatever, you know, I think that it can be very valuable for you, you know, to get this information, keep yourself up to date, learn some new energy management practices, and, you know, most importantly, increase savings. You know, I really see the, the workbook and the training experience as more of a tool. And the workbook is a tool you get to take with you. You know, it can help you after class. I've used my workbook years after taking the class, and I found it very, very useful. Now, as a secondary benefit, and this is interesting, I, I, we didn't expect this. I've been teaching for more than 10 years, is that more commonly we find one or two people in every class that are that are sitting back in the back and they've already taken the exam and they're there for the continuing education credits and I always thought why don't you take another class learn something new but they've continued to say these words they say well this class has you know got a lot of bang for your buck and it's very cost effective for me especially if I'm limited on travel we have some people who can only take one training per year or whatever so they can come to the five day you know live course get you know, a lot of training, a lot of CEUs in a very short period of time. And so that's one option they have. Of course, again, you can also do the Certified Energy Manual annual training update. We do an annual kind of two-day update that's usually in conjunction with the annual conference in the fall, okay, uh, called the World Conference. Uh, or, of course, you can take another course. And so those are some reasons why I think everyone knows that the CEM is a broad-based program covering a lot of different topics. And then you might take this program and then go on and take other more specific topics, which AE has plenty of courses for you, but lots of options there. Uh, you know, CEM is the most recognized and around the world, and there are people from around the world watching this update. And I want to thank everyone. We have many contributors from around the world who contributed to this workbook, providing cutting edge slides uh, in various expertise areas. So, you know, it's a really a global effort to pull this whole thing together. And Back to the main benefits, you know, for you to become a CEM, if you're already a CEM, congratulations. Um, if you're new, this basically means, you know, you're more sellable. You're, as a person, as a career, you you can get a raise usually. Um, there's, a, there's a link here, and you can go on the AWE website and learn more about it, but there's tons of benefits. And I think employers and, you know, professionals recognize the CEM. Why is it so successful? Because we provide ideas that are very practical, very cost effective, save energy and money. And again, it's useful for the employers who may be paying for your program or the professionals as a, as a value add to, to your career. So 
Anyway, <clears throat> give me a quick, I want to just touch base with you. I like to keep webinars kind of interactive. I want to see how many of you are existing CEMs. If you're existing CEM, type existing in the question poll or the chat bar, either one, it'll show up and I'll be able to see that. Just type existing. And if you're, you know, new or, or new to AE, type new because we want to know, you know, how many are, are there. It's just kind of a way to keep us engaged in a mostly a one-way conversation that we're having right now. So <clears throat> anyway, I appreciate all the all of that and I can see that, that there are many existing and new people here and literally with the names that I would guess from all around the world so fantastic now if you're new to the CEM you would know that the CEM exam is composed and that's really where most people take the five-day training they're trying to get to this exam thing which is highly stressful if you thought it was stressful type stressful uh, that would be awesome to get that feedback too and I'm sure that'll show up in the content bars but the new exam basically has several sections it's called the body knowledge and um, this tells you what percentage is you know of each section and what's neat about the new workbook it's organized exactly the same there's a couple of minor edits where we've maybe broken apart motors and electrical power systems but basically the sections that are test taking sections in the workbook exactly match the uh, sections on the exam we've tried to keep that um, a little more consistent in this go around <clears throat> and so um, ultimately, one of the major improvements we made this year was just a complete streamlining and, and organization of the workbook. And one of the things I will say is that I've already said that it flows, you know, from the building and through the systems, you know, kind of top to bottom, simple to complex. We cover simple and fundamental things first couple of days, more complex subjects later. But within each section, we've added this learning objectives and we, we're very specific. We will say we want you to be aware of maybe, you know, terminology, vocabulary, these kinds of things. And then we will say ability to perform or ability to do. Basically, that means we expect you to do these things. And we're very specific about what we want you to do. And I'll give you some examples of that. We also have quizzes in the back of each section worked in class and the instructors have the solutions written step by step out for you. In this edition of the workbook, and I hope future editions will follow this, we basically have blue text which highlights maybe additional information to enhance learning experience or extra information or where to go farther. Red text usually is for the student to take action or maybe it's steps in a multi-step exercise. You might have a problem that takes several slides to solve. We will keep you on track by notating where the steps are. But as always, <clears throat> if you ever take a class and and you have some suggestions and we expect there always will be suggestions because the energy management you know arena is a moving a moving target it's always advancing and always evolving and always has new information you know we appreciate those suggestions give those to your instructor we'll we'll get that integrated in and we appreciate that feedback very much that's how the program gets better so anyway i'd like to go through some slide samples for you right now and just show you you know what this is going to look and feel like so for example this is the industrial section i'm starting here because it's a little more complicated but i want to illustrate how the red and blue text is going to come in handy so in this section you know and I'm, again I'm going to get this whole thing done in about 15 minutes so just hang with me but we're going to go through a lot of slides really quickly um, here in this section we're talking about learning objectives right up in front we're going to say hey awareness of pump systems terminology pump curves some basic understandings of you know typical layouts terminology etc okay but ability you know we really want you and the body of knowledge really wants you to be able to estimate savings for compressed air pumps and waste heat recovery and it's very specific we're going to expect you to be able to do those calculations and we will show you how to do them but i think as far as an overview i think the the workbook has far better graphics than it's ever had and we're really explaining things in a little more clear but as you can see we're focused on the equations that relate to saving energy we've tried to reduce the number of you know bullets per slide or you know really focus on the things that save energy in pumps we're talking about optimization of pumps and we have graphics to show you maybe a you know a throttled uh, pump and, and putting on a variable speed drive and then how the equation changes so I'm just going through these quickly to give you you know a very very quick overview of what this thing looks like in compressed air systems this is an example of where you got the red text you got these you know five different you know top five things you can do to save energy compressed air and we've got a reference to go with it in fact all the graphics in the section in this workbook have uh, references and all the data has been updated so i think you'll find that very useful as well because you can dive deeper and we point you in the right direction to get there so for example step one step two step three it's all there and we will navigate you through and what i think is really neat about this is we not just show you the overall layout of the system we'll talk about all of the different things you can do to save energy and then we have graphics and animations in this version we've never had before that you know step by step 
tell you where to focus. And I'm going purposely slow here because I know animations don't do well on webinars, but hopefully you'll be able to see some of this. Um, anyway, so you know we're going step by step and, and really pointing you where you need to focus to save energy in a real system. Also, we have better graphics, even videos in a lot of sections where we will be showing you how heat transfer occurs, whether it's shell and heat exchanger, other type of heat exchanger, plate and frame, all of that stuff you know, pretty exciting and pretty useful material. So I'm curious, can you guys see the animation? Just give me a yes if you can see the animation. I'm kind of curious how that plays because some of these broadcasts are going all the way around the world and back. So um, I will guess I'll look at that later. <laughs> anyway, onward uh, to just overall view of graphics. This is one section. I think this is the energy audit section. And you can see we've got lots of graphics, a lot more pictures, uh, a lot more color than we've ever had before. And not just showing you like whatever, you know, um, not a variable speed drive, what a uh, vibration analysis might look like, but how it's performed and showing how the measurements are taken. So you can, if you see someone in your plant doing this, you kind of know what they're doing and, and that might help you with vocabulary or how to do a compressed air leak study and what that looks like. Or actually we have videos of showing you know what compressed air and steam leaks look like. So those things will help you. We have condensing boilers in this version. Uh, we have a better explanation. I think the international folks uh, contributed this, you know, showing how a, a rotating magnetic field in three phase, how that induces a, a, a rotor shaft to, you know, to rotate basically in the rotor and all of these things are are just better explained a better understanding of slip and how power factors affected um, we have real pictures from you know real instructors and real people have been out in the field and have taken these and i think that's uh, very valuable to show you. you know this is what an odp motor looks like so you get a little better understanding not just with words we have pictures of different types of major air handling systems and on the lighting section we have you know very clear um, illustrations of you know vivid colors with CRI 90 versus a CRI 70 and if you're if you're a CEM you know what I'm talking about um, this is you know something that you you should be you know remembering for you but if not hey that's why we have these updates <laughs> but anyway these are just different examples of different things we've done and I, and I appreciate the feedback another thing we've done is try to condense some slides into very clear tables. And we've had, and I'll give you examples of this later, but this is an example of lighting sources. We had, you know, just text before, but now we have the major technologies broken out, what the key value characteristics are, whether it's CRI, CCT, life, how people, you know, what are the value of having this type of technology? And then maybe we even use color or shading to indicate which ones are HID or high intensity, you know, trying to just get that education a little quicker, a little cleaner. Um, we also, you know, have, of course, the same kind of slide by side pictures where we have, you know, how do you go from 400 watt, maybe 454 watts with this ballast to something with 150 watt on energy savings. But you also see the quality difference. You see the difference in color rendition and the, and the feeling of safety, uh, those kinds of things, which you can't really put energy dollar savings on. Uh, these are phot photochromatic windows, but really we're talking about controls and how the controls would ramp up in a dimmable uh, daylight harvesting situation. Uh, or we even talk about power over ethernet because that's a new technology. We see that more and more out where people are controlling their lighting systems you know, with Ethernet cables and all of these other you know, new exciting Wi-Fi and all of that stuff is in there. I don't want to spend too much time on econ because everyone thinks that's thrilling and that's really a sincere joke from me. But um, I think we've done a neat job with the economic section and introducing a little more color and having green arrows meaning cash flow, meaning good savings and, and red arrows meaning down. But we have these kinds of things broken out for you. And also in the, you know, immediately after that slide, we go to this slide. We write the table next slide so we don't have to flip to the back you can see right away in different steps and different colors how we attack and solve these kinds of problems so i think you'll find it much more visually entertaining and also useful as a student but beyond just doing the math we also show you you know and this kind of neat another subtext for instructors to know is that we have you know the main title of what we're talking about but we also have a subtitle so in this thing we're talking about this retrofit but we're talking really about getting approval because it's not just about doing the numbers as a CEM, you have to be able to present. And this shows you three different solution paths, A, B, C. And again, this is red text telling you, hey, this is going to take more than one slide. So we're going to go A, B, C on this. Three different evaluation methods, whether you use simple payback or maybe use net present value or savings to investment ratio. And then it shows you, considering two different you know, types of projects, which ones are going to pass the criteria and which ones are going to get funded. So that helps you, you know, learn to present and have greater success. And again, it doesn't really matter how many CEM classes you take or how much, how many books you read. It matters how many projects you get implemented, because if you don't get implemented projects, 
they don't save any money and they don't help the environment. So I hope you get my passion on that. <clears throat> it's very important that you understand this and can present it so that we save more energy. Um, man, I almost get emotional. So anyway, uh, sources of heat loss, heat gain. So this is an example of the building envelope section. Again, more graphics to try to demonstrate the difference between conduction, convection. And one thing, again, you'll see in the old presentation, we used to just slap up, you know, an ASHRAE table there. What we tried to do, and these are hard to read because they've been reproduced and copied. We've tried to just create new tables. And I think you can see this much clearer. There's less columns to fuss with, and you can focus on the key important things. And we've also tried to summarize. A lot of people complain, you know, in, in taking the test. I can understand what fiberglass board or fiberglass, you know, bad is. And we've separated that out in layman's terms. We have the official term here. If you go back to the asteroid thing, you can look at that. But we try to make it easy for you to find the right <laughs> numbers and plug them in. And we think with this kind of training, it'll help you with the real ash ray uh, tables in the real world. We have degree days, other examples of graphics, just trying to better educate and better illustrate what we're trying to explain with less words. This is thermal energy storage. And this is a case study from Dallas Fort Worth Airport. And you can really see, you know, what a wonderful system this is. This is charging the tank at night, you know, three in the morning. And you can see the discharge is happening in the afternoon and they're saving demand there. Just a little better graphic than we had before. And we also have some great case studies on new technologies like, you know, this is phase change media where you've got phase change media, basically like thermal energy storage, cooling down when the air conditioners are on and then using that phase change media or basically thermal storage in the way of cooling to cool the building and peak shave. Or in an emergency situation, maybe they lost power, they still can keep this thing cooling cool for several hours. So, you know, very exciting new technologies like chilled beams and other things are talked about. But we also go into a little more detail explaining the kinds of decisions you're going to have to make as a CEM. Maybe you're going to have to pick mono or polycrystalline and we'll tell you the pros and cons of each one. So there's just all in all a, a more thorough explanation of, you know, what combines uh, solar power is or, you know, utility scale solar power, what that might look like. And we talk about new terms like the duck curve and other things that we've never really you know, pad in the slide. So this is some things that, you know, these are real industry trends that we're, we're tackling in the program. So at the end of each section, you'll see, I mentioned there's a quiz, right? And, and this is one for the electrical tariff section, uh, you know, sample problem like we've had before. But what you'll find is, you know, we'll allow you to work this in class and then we'll have the solution. And in the solution, it has step by step in red to keep you on track how to, you know, how to do this part first, then step two, then step three, step four. Give me a sign if you like the red. I'm just curious. I'm curious as I like feedback. Most of the work I do, we don't, we don't find out about for 10 years. So if you like this kind of format, that's what you're going to be experiencing throughout the, throughout the uh, course. So I want to do one more little overview of a section. This is the maintenance section, something we did a fair amount of work on. Um, and this is, again, you know, starting off right in the beginning, awareness of maintenance, commercialing terminology, uh, useful maintenance technologies. But the ability, we expect you to have the ability to estimate the savings from compressed air, steam leaks, that kind of thing. We tell you what we want. And then <clears throat> jumping into the tables, these are brand new tables. They've just been published. Uh, literally last week or the week before, and you've got basically DOE data that's been reformatted and repurposed and actually more conservative than the 30-year-old data we had before. So you got new tables with better estimates of savings. And I think slightly more clear. You can see the pipe diameter in blue. You can pick your pipe diameter of you know how big of how big of um, un uninsulated steam line we have and what steam pressure and you can find a number and this is a big contrast to trying to use you know some type of graph where you might end up in some you know number I don't know what that is is it 1750 1800 and then you get variance on the test and you get variance in the class this way you know where you stand with these you know comparing the old charts versus the new way this is steam leaks you know the whole size you know the steam pressure and again DOE data, more current, 2012, and you can look it all up and you can see the assumptions if you want, but you can get the data. There's less ambiguity in the, in the program. And so I think that's a major improvement, not just for the people who've never taken the CEM, but for the existing CEMs to get these kinds of tables, get this kind of information. And, you know, one thing that's neat about the new workbook is that we have an Appendix A, which has full page tables and charts. So before, you know, if I say you're looking at a slide, of course, as we're looking at it, it's full page to you right now. But when you're in the class, it's really two slides per page. It might be a little harder to read some of these things at two slides of the page. So we have full page charts and that's an innovation we brought several years ago. But what we did this time is we organized everything and put a table of contents so you can quickly get to what you need to. And this is critical in the test. You're taking a test 
give me, I'm just curious how many of you felt a little bit of time pressure on that test? Type time in your question. Just curious if <laughs> that's a real thing because like 80% of the people felt time pressured and I took four hours to take this test. So that tells you, you know, how slow a test taker I am. But <clears throat> this way, when you need to look up a table, you can see what page it's on and flip right in Appendix A and get to where you need to go. For example, if you need to get to uninsulated pipe thermal losses, bam, you're there. And, and also, we have an Appendix B, which has uh, basically sample, very thorough sample CEM questions that are organized the exact same way as a CEM test. And they're also organized exactly the same as the workbook. But what's neat about it is it's really almost like a test experience. There were, so say you take the class and you, you know, get into... Um, the HVAC systems. I think it's on the second or third day. And, you know, you complete that section in class at night. You want to study. You go to Appendix B. You, you know, go to, you know, page 11 and you're going to, or I'm sorry, we're going to do energy audits first. <laughs> That's funny. I don't remember what slide I put up next. So you got energy audit section. You get there. You can go knock through those problems. And it's very similar format to the exam. Um, before ANSI, you know, was involved, I wrote several CEM exams or was a major contributor to part of them. And I can tell you the format was very similar to this. So we tried to create a format that'd be familiar for you so that when you take the exam, you're not, you know, dealing with one more new, you know, look. So you have that. And what's also neat, and let's say we did the HVAC section and we'll say, you know, we're on this particular section here. We're at trying to answer question number six as, as homework and we get stuck and we don't know how to do it. Well, then you go to Appendix C. OK, and you go to Appendix C, you go to HVAC, go to page 13 or somewhere after 13, and you'll find the answer for, you know, question six is carefully written out for you step by step by step. And I think that's going to help you not just, you know, in getting the answers, but showing you how we got there, showing you how the tables, et cetera. Now, some of them will just have E. We might put some more explanation there on some of them. But if it's just a qualitative answer, like, you know, which kind of light is this this kind, it's a straightforward answer. Um, you might see just a letter. But most of the ones that have math are going to have step by step written out for you. So, again, ultimately, you're here to take the CEM test, you know, and I I hope you pass it. I can vouch it's a very difficult test, um, you know. Uh, hopefully this review has given you kind of a sneak book, sneak peek at that workbook, and hope hopefully you'll feel like if you took you know this new workbook you'd have a better chance of of passing that test. Um, so you know the bottom line is hey I hope I'll see you in class whether you're a new student or uh, an existing CEM student. You know, if you're new, this is the best test prep you can get. I, I don't know of anything else that I, I'm quite sure there's nothing else that's going to help you pass that exam better. And also some of the best tools for your career. Really, for energy management, this is a tool you get to keep with you forever. Not just on energy management, but in economics and some of the other things, because your instructors have, all instructors have, you know, 20 years experience. So you're going to get tons of experience of real world examples and, and side notes and stories as well. And if you're already a CEM, hey, this is a great review, update some skills, get some new material. And if you're a manager, and again, well, let me say this, if you're, if you're going back and doing this again, um, and you're sitting in the back of the class, I can tell you, you probably will be a little more relaxed because you're not having to take that pressure of that test. And generally, I hear this all the time, the people that take it again, they really are able to listen and get the depth of material much greater than they can if they're focused on what's going to be on the test, what's going to, you know, it's a totally different environment. And those are usually the pretty much the happiest people in class. So anyway, you got that to look forward to also. So, um, if you're a manager, hey, send your team to us. In one week, we're going to get them into shape. They're going to learn a ton of vocabulary. It's like drinking from a fire hose, but I think that it'll be very valuable for them. You know, so all you have to do really, you know, is go to AEW's website. You can find out how to register. But as you can see, this has been a worldwide effort. Several contributors from all around the world, um, you know, trying to make your workbook better, a better learning environment. And I'm really proud of what they've done. I think it's awesome. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I hope that in the 26 minutes we've been together, you got something out of this and that um, this will help you understand what the new CEM program is about and some view of what the new workbook looks like. Again, hope to see you again. And thanks so much for your time. Have a great day.